Dune Part 2 has just hit theaters, and while the entire film is getting a lot of attention in the filmmaking world for its impressive cinematography, there's one sequence in particular that caught our eye. Here at Kalari, we specialize in infrared modification and filtration, which is why this sequence was so intriguing. The scene is full of stunning black and white images, but somehow it looks mysterious and alien. This is because the sequence was actually shot in infrared. Without any major spoilers, the effect is used on the Harkonnen homeworld Gidi Prime. The light produced by this planet's sun gives the inhabitants an inhumanly pale complexion. This was achieved through infrared imaging. Infrared has a long history in cinema, but is often used for technical purposes or special effects behind the scenes. We have supplied our filters to Lucas Films to be used for capture of infrared paint dots for The Irishman, and Hoyt Van Hoytema recently pioneered a use for infrared to simulate nighttime scenes shot in broad daylight using infrared in a dual camera system, taking advantage of how infrared makes skies appear black in daylight. However, both of these applications were technical, and you wouldn't know about the infrared, which is why we're so excited to see Dune lean into the actual aesthetics of infrared. While shooting infrared can seem daunting due to the fact that materials captured through infrared photography, like foliage, skies, clothing, and skin tones, will react in unique and sometimes unpredictable ways, the process is actually relatively simple. Being that we specialize in infrared modification and filtration, we decided to recreate two infrared shots from Dune Part 2 using our full spectrum Canon R6, our Kalari 720 nanometer filter, and one light to show how you can create Hollywood level images with minimal gear. The first step to recreating these shots is to figure out how it was shot on set. Since Dune Part 2 has just been released, there's limited behind the scenes information, so we're gonna have to work off of what is in the frame. Let's start with filtration. Typically, when you shoot in infrared, your camera has been modified to capture the entire light spectrum. This means you'll need to use a filter to hone in on a certain wavelength. Based on the look of this sequence, our best guess is that their film crew used a 720 nanometer filter. But since we have a different setup and environment, we're going to test our 665, 720, 780, and 850 nanometer filters and see which looks the closest. Let's start with this shot first. When you want to recreate lighting, you want to look for what direction the source is coming from and evaluate the quality of that light. This means determining if the light is hard or soft. Hard light creates sharp, defined shadows, while soft light creates a gradual division between light and dark. In this shot, you can see that the light is coming from above and slightly in front of our subject, and that it is a relatively hard light source due to the defined shadows. You will also notice a lack of an eye light, which is something we will want to replicate. The presence of an eye light is a minor detail that many people won't notice, but will drastically change the emotion of the shot. It creates a twinkle in the subject's eye that can be used to bring the audience emotionally closer to the character. Notice the presence of an eye light in this intimate scene with our main characters, while the psychotic Fade Rautha is shown without an eye light. If we did everything else the exact same, but added an eye light, the shot would have a very different emotional feel to it. Next, we looked at the compression on the subject's face to determine focal length. The best way to figure this out, especially when the background is not visible, is to determine how flat the subject's face feels. This can be hard to get a feel for, so we recommend referencing other images shot at different focal lengths. We decided a 50mm would get us pretty close. For our first setup, we started by using a scissor clamp to attach our light to the ceiling. This gave us the right angle, but the light was hitting too much of our subject, illuminating the shoulders, unlike in our reference shot. To shape our light, we used black electrical tape to create a thin slot in the middle. This gave us a much more similar look. Next, we took a photo with each of our four Kalari infrared filters, making sure to set a custom white balance each time. In post-production, we completely desaturated the image to remove any leftover color and did some masking to further shape our light, giving us this final image. For setup 2, we have a much softer light source coming from camera right slightly in front of our subject. To soften our light as much as possible, we use a book light setup. This is essentially a wedge shape with the bounce on one side and diffusion on the other. We use the back side of a bounce board plus a cheap foldable piece of diffusion. The light source bounces off of the whiteboard and then passes through the diffusion, creating a beautiful soft light source. This shot looks much tighter than the last, so we decided on an 85mm lens. 
Next, we made a very janky pair of opera glasses, draped a jacket over our subject, and got a shot with each of our filters, giving us this final image. You can see that our infrared filters gave us very similar skin tones when compared to the final scene. For our first setup, 850 nanometers looked the most similar. However, it did not work at all for setup 2 as it made the lighting too flat and cut out a majority of the key light on our model's face. You can see the decrease in light from 665 all the way up to 850. Since 665 partially operates invisible light, it provided us more to work with in post-production and looked best for setup 2. Granted, we shot this using LEDs and lost a lot of light as we went further into the infrared spectrum. In contrast, the infrared sequence in Dune Part 2 was most likely shot using daylight or proper infrared lights. That being said, if you're trying to recreate this look, we recommend our Kalari 720 nanometer filters for the most similar results, especially after small tweaks in post-processing. By using this technique, filmmakers can alter the perception of the audience, making ordinary landscapes or scenes appear unfamiliar and unsettling with a monochromatic palette that is distinct from traditional black and white. This distinct color palette can enhance the eerie feeling of the environment, evoking a sense of desolation or alienation. Shooting in infrared can have so many different aesthetics and evoke so many different emotions. It can be used as a powerful storytelling tool that we hope to see more filmmakers implement in the future. If you have any questions about our different filters or about shooting infrared in general, leave a comment below and subscribe for more content.